Yo, what's going on everybody? Winter Kills here. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Saturday Night Locals. Here we are, episode 81, I believe. And we are playing Earth Machine. That's right. Finally fulfilling that donation incentive for the last one back one month. And yeah, we're playing Earth Machine as promised since we hit that $100 goal. And uh, round one here, I was playing against a pearly deck. And uh, my opponent's super awesome dude, and uh, it's always a pleasure to play against him. So, uh, yeah, going to be a pretty interesting match for you guys. And uh, now keep in mind, uh, this is the first time I've played Earth Machine in probably a little over two years. And uh, I had been doing some testing on stream uh, over on my Twitch, you know, leading up to this for about two weeks. I also played this deck at Locals the week prior, ended up going 3-1 uh, and actually topping um, but I'm still a little rusty. There's still there's a lot of depth to this deck that, uh, you know, um, I still haven't had time to fully pick up yet. And uh, we're kind of learning on the fly, or relearning, I should say, as my opponent slaps down infinite impermanence on my Brutal Dozer, which kind of completely stops the whole play, uh, mainly because I don't have any other extenders. The Rune Force in my hand is not helping me. And it certainly doesn't help to see my opponent special summon Fenrir either with Droll and Lockbird in hand. So I was like, this is going to make things a little awkward because, you know, as soon as he does something, I'm going to half the Droll and right? He's playing Pearly as I see normal summon uh, the Pearly and it's going to add, I think, happy memory. And uh, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to fire the Droll. I mean, he either gets rid of the Dozer or he gets rid of the Heavy Forward. I'd prefer if he didn't get rid of the dozer because you know you can't get back things that are banished face down playing this deck um but to my surprise uh he actually didn't use fenrir there i guess there was really no need to i guess i mean that's that's completely fair like they're just kind of using it to use it at that point but now my opponent is using uh the pearly effect to rank up and uh, i do have imperm but I didn't want to use the Imperm, mainly because I guess I was afraid of him having access to, like, Perlily and ranking up with that. Like, you know, maybe he has Spell, pitch another Spell, summon out Perlily. Uh, and he obviously can't add off of it, but he can still use the rank up effect. I wanted to save Imperm for that, I suppose. Um, as he goes into Happy, which is just, you know, the one that can attack um, and search. Um, I think it can attack, like, a bunch of times. But he's under Droll, so he obviously uh, can't do that. So it's not that big of a threat. And he clears the board. He attacks over the Dozer and banishes the Heavy Forward, which, again, was kind of surprising. And I do take 2,000 directly to the face. And uh, the only thing I'm, I'm worried about now is him setting up a Zeus. It's like a Zeus line. And I thought he was going to maybe put, like, uh, another Ixies on top of that, like a Downward or something. And then summon Zeus for the double send. But he actually never ended up doing that. It's just a one send Zeus. And I, I was like, you know what? He's not going to use it now, so I don't need to fire off the Imperm. But now I'm also in an interesting situation where it's like, you know, I can only Imperm one, you know, either the Zeus or the Fenrir. So it's probably going to end up having to be, like, I guess it doesn't have to be the Zeus, right? Because, like, I could play it really simple here and just, like, summon out Trencher and Harvester, which would be a great play because even if he does Zeus, right, I can still Trencher back the Harvester and grab dozer if it wasn't already in my graveyard so like yeah it makes things a little weird here so i'm trying to figure out exactly what are the best things to summon off of this urgent schedule and for those that don't know what urgent schedule does this card is literally insane it says if your opponent controls more monsters than you do you can special summon uh two earth machines from your deck who one whose level is four or lower and one who is five or higher and i think you can only attack with like machines or something like that for the rest of the turn um, so it allows me to summon out Fortress and Harvester. Um, I knew I definitely wanted access to Fortress because I had uh, Rune Force in hand, but the other the other monster that I wanted to grab there really wasn't like super crazy. Like I either grab like Gear Frame or I grab like Unclasper or I grab Harvester. Right, there's not too many great options, um, and it all it all just makes like Harvester a little bit weaker now that like dozers out of the deck and i haven't recycled them yet so i just go into ancient gear ballista and uh, my opponent uses the fenrir on resolution and then i just you know continue to play here i'm like all right that's fine that's honestly where i'd rather him fenrir 
and now my life gets a lot easier too because I don't have to worry about like deciding which to imperm at like a pivotal juncture. Like am I going to imperm the Fenrir, am I going to have to imperm the Zeus type thing. And it looks like I drew Citadel for turn, which is a, kind of a nice draw. And I have plenty of fodder to summon Fortress now. I can summon him three times from the grave. Uh, sending that Trencher and that Box, and then sending Citadel and Rune Force. And uh, this is where Earth Machine really thrives. It's when you don't get Earth Locked, and you usually get Earth Locked by Dozer. But once you have everything set up, um, and you can play without Dozer, like the deck does a lot of really cool things. So we're summoning out Trencher. Uh, we're using Trencher here to bring out Harvester. And then Harvester is going to go ahead and search basically the last piece of the puzzle. Um, for the Infinitrack engine, which is Tunneler, which, you know, most of you guys know this card. If you don't, it's basically Pot of Avarice for um, Infinitracks, well, Earth Machines, basically. Now my opponent decides that they want to use Zeus, and I do uh, chain the Imperm there. Honestly, I probably could have let that go. Probably. But I decide to Imperm it, and then I use Harvester's Effect... Uh, to overlay, or we'll make them both level 9s, so basically make their levels, their combined levels. And I go into Enter Blathnir, um, which is kind of wild. I I'm getting a little, like, uh, greedy, I guess, with my play. I'm, like, trying to, like, force out a hand trap to see if he has any. Um, and I end up sniping a Pearl Lily out of his hand. Like, that, I probably should have just made... Uh, Earth Slicer like 100% um, but I don't and it's gonna make the and I and I don't realize it yet because I'm like wait how am I getting over the Zeus because Ender Blath is only at 2900 um, I need to I need to like actually like clear the board here and and put up something that's actually like gonna do something and yeah I, I think I'm starting to realize that now it's like I don't really have a whole lot that I can actually do which is uh, a little unfortunate so I'm deciding on what to link into I go into the double-headed anger knuckle uh, which is one of the craziest link twos for the deck um, on paper it doesn't seem like it does a lot but it actually does quite a bit for the deck and uh, I'm also thinking about how I want to resolve the uh, tunneler in the grave um, there's some things in Grave that I'd like to put back and draw, but there's other things I'd obviously like like to keep in Grave. Um, this is a very weak Tunneler because, again, I have to put back uh, things that, again, I'd rather keep in Grave. One of them being Fortress. So I do have to, unfortunately, decide to put back Fortress. Um, I could have, I, I arguably could have left them. I could have left the Fortress and targeted Citadel with the... Uh, tunneler and then chained knuckle to bring out the citadel so we had to put I had to put one less card back essentially and I could keep access to fortress and citadel but uh, didn't catch that and as I draw box uh, again which is super unlucky but at the same time allows me to summon fortress like for the fourth time this turn but yeah like this is definitely just a huge like miscalculation on my part like I should have 100% made uh, the Earth Slicer to get rid of both Zeus and Fenrir and put in a lot more damage and maybe, honestly, even have gone for game. Let's see, 3,100 plus 25, that is 56 plus 15. Okay, that's not quite game, but actually it would have been game because I did forget something. If you're looking at my graveyard right now, I did completely forget something, and that is Ruin Force is in my grave, and I could have summoned him by banishing Citadel and Ancient Gearbox. Uh, and that that actually would have been game, because Ruin Force is 4,600 attack for some reason. Uh, but I, I, I put myself in a weird spot, because, you know, and I think I notice it here after Battle Phase. I'm like, damn, I have a... Uh, I've got this Ruin Force in grave, and I just didn't summon it. And I've got to just pass on literally, like, I mean, I don't want to say no interruptions because I do technically have an interruption in my grave in the form of Citadel if he does get rid of Knuckle, if he does get rid of Fortress. I mean, Fortress is just a hard card to deal with, too. Um, my, my opponent starts by normal summoning the uh, Pearly to grab a uh, Pretty Memory. 
and I'm thinking, oh man, I really just, I really just screwed up by giving my opponent an extra turn. Like I had to end the game right there. Especially if I couldn't put up actual like interruptions. Like I couldn't like set up Regulus. Can't set up, you know, what is it? Uh, Dora with Derecrane, all that stuff. Needed a, uh, needed to actually end the game there. Because if you've played Earth Machine, you know that sometimes it struggles with putting up actual forms of interaction and interruptions sometimes. Um, other times it doesn't. It really just depends on the hand and, you know, how your opponent interacted with you, etc., etc. But there are situations where you're just putting up big bodies and very niche forms of interruption like Citadel, etc. And uh, in those situations, you kind of got to be able to make the read. You're like, okay, I need to kind of push and go for a game here, even if that means playing into a hand trap. Um, and I kind of went, like, Enderblathner is not by any means an anti-hand trap card, but it does force hand traps because you can just threaten ripping that hand trap out of the opponent's hand and it makes them more inclined to actually use that hand trap, specifically talking about Nibiru, and which was like, what I was kind of worried about, that my opponent might have Nibiru in the middle of all of that, and uh, I wanted to go for the Enderblathner to force it out, I guess. Um, but, you know, hindsight being 2020, should have made the, the Earth Slicer... Because uh, that card goes crazy. And uh, now my opponent is going to rank up again here with the Pearly with Happy Memory. And going to Happy. And this is where things start to get a little crazy. Just because I have a lot of monsters. And, you know, Happy does crazy things when you have lots of monsters. Uh, he's going to get to attack. Get to have something. Get to search. Um, but I also have Citadel. I'm like, alright, he's playing into the Citadel here, which works for me. And uh, he has the Enderblathnir. And the other thing that's tough, too, is that he can protect now with uh, one of the pearly spells. So even if I do use Citadel here, uh, you know, basically still gets to keep the happy on field. And I think I didn't fully realize that at this point. As I go Citadel target itself and try to blow up everything 3k and under, which would mean the Zeus and the Happy, which would be pretty good. But he also has my friend, which would just give him stuff back. See, I think that's a happy memory, which he is choosing to protect and also chaining to attach to it. And, uh, yeah, this is, uh, things are getting a little out of control here, like I said. But the Zeus, the Zeus still dies, I guess. That's good. Um, and now we gotta do weird math, cause Ender Blathner's halved and it's at 2,900, so, uh, that's 1,450. Which is always weird to, uh, do 50 life points. And then halves the Fortress, and I was like, is that target? Because, you know, Fortress gets targeted, uh, by a monster effect, I believe. You get to look at your opponent's hand, uh, and rip a card out. Which is pretty good. Pretty good for a random effect. It's also got another effect, too, if it's destroyed by battle or card effect, I believe. Um, you can, it might, it might just be battle. It might be if it's just destroyed by battle. Um, you get to, to pop a card on the opponent's field, which is kind of crazy. Card does a lot. For, especially for being in as old a card as it is, like, yeah, that card's insane. And then, you know, obviously finishes off by attacking again over the fortress and completely clearing my field. And, uh, I, I don't think at the time I realized that um, I could have gone for a game. I think the only thing I realized was that uh, I sh like I, I had Rune Force Engraved to summon and I didn't summon it. And that could have helped me in some way, shape, or form. But, yeah, watching this back now, I, I realized that I, I had game. So... Yeah, I'm just reading Fortress really quick. So if this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, target one card, your opponent controls, destroy that target. And then its text also says, before resolving an opponent's monster effect that targets this face-up card, look at your opponent's hand and discard one card from their hand. Some old text there. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, like, now, like, I can summon Rune Force. Like, I have Knuckle and Grave. All this stuff. But... You know, it's not going to matter if you can set up a Noir, if you can set up, like, a 5, not 5 cent, but, like, a, a 2 to 3 cent Zeus. 
you know, needless to say, I, I threw the game. All right. I didn't want to actually say it, but I definitely threw the game here. Um, then he goes ahead and, you know, sucks up both the urgent schedule. And I think that is a pretty memory from his graveyard. And, uh, yeah, it definitely has enough now to hard summon Noir. And I really don't have anything in my main deck to deal with Noir. Other than trying to get to, like, Juggernaut Lieb and attacking over at 6k. Uh, that is the one nice thing about playing Earth Machine again, is you do have access to monsters that are just huge. So, that was a nice thing to have. Uh, but then he's going to go ahead and use the effect of Plump here to go ahead and send off Happy to attach my friend, which I thought was interesting. Uh, and then go ahead and slap the Noir on top of that. Just getting as many materials underneath it as possible. And also, why not end phase? Just put a Sleepy Memory under it as well to get that draw one in the draw phase. I'm like, all right, what could I possibly draw here? Derek Crane is not it. Derek Crane is not that guy right now. An urgent schedule maybe would have been nice. Maybe puts me back in the game. Maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a big maybe at that point. But urgent schedule would be probably like the best possible draw. Because I would probably summon out Trencher, Harvester, and then... I don't even know. Link into Clifford Genius, maybe. And then try to play from there. And just do everything I possibly could until he burns as many materials off that thing as he possibly can. Which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven materials with the uh, delicious memory underneath it. So it's gaining uh, quite a bit. I think it's gaining like 2100 defense. Because it's 300 attack for every material. 300 attack and defense. And yeah, I scoop it up. Scoop it up. Because there's really nothing else that I can do there. And I did not want to waste any more time. As you can already tell by the length of this video. Uh, this one does go the distance. Um, so yeah, I was like, alright, we gotta we gotta lock in here. We gotta lock in game two. We can't be making mistakes like I did in game one. Let's lock in here and actually catch the dub. Uh, so we go ahead and draw opening hand. No non-engine, just all engine here. We draw the in-class bear, which is super unfortunate. Uh, but, you know, I was like, now if I... At least if I get impermed on Dozer, I can still, I think, establish River Stormer because I had Trencher and a way to summon Fortress in hand. Uh, so I was like, alright, we're going to play this out the same way. Opening Always opening heavy forward is, like, really risky because it really sucks into Droll. That's why sometimes, like, I side out a heavy forward or two. Just because, like, that's the last thing I want to see, especially if my opponent is siding in Droll. And, you know, if I'd rather just hard open Harvester at that point. But luckily he didn't. Uh, so I, you know, heavy forward for Harvester, normal summon Harvester, grab Dozer. And I'm basically just trying to do standard Dozer combo, at least that's... The only line that I see in my head that makes sense to do. And first I link into a early Goliath just in case he does have uh, something to stop Dozer. And it like at least gets me a little bit more fodder in the graveyard to try to uh, resolve a Tunneler later on. Because uh, I knew I could at least get to a Tunneler. Um, so yeah, there's that... Uh, that fortress coming in super clutch there pitching itself in class bear summon it and then tributing it off for tr uh, the trencher and that gets me access to river stormer which now is basically like uh you know dozer never got impermed so that's nice and the other thing is too is i'm not earth machine locked either uh so it's like i resolved dozer without the negative effects of resolving dozer which now lets me summon things like uh, Rune Force, and that's really about it. Yeah, right? Or I guess I could summon Ender Blathen now still uh, to rip a card. Try to rip another card out of the opponent's hand. I'm also thinking about what to search here to like keep the line going, because I don't have a lot. Like I only have one card left in hand. It's just the uh, Overdrive, which is a great card to have. Like, having access to a Raigeki against the Pearly deck, I feel like it's really strong. Um, just because anytime they try to rank up, you just blow up the field, and that that's it. So here I go for Citadel, which... Eh. I'm thinking... Well, I guess if I wanted to summon Fortress, then I guess that makes sense that I did that. But that also could have probably just been Bullet, because I'm getting Citadel access regardless with Overdrive. So maybe that was a little uh, little oversight there. And you can also see the skill drains 
are in the deck. Skill Drain and DD Crow are what I sided in. Uh, pretty self-explanatory for this matchup. And I was really... Like, I wanted to resolve, like, a really good Tunneler here. Like, putting back, like, all extra deck monsters if I could. Just so I could try to draw into, uh, you know, a Skill Drain. Because I'm pretty sure if I draw into a Skill Drain, like, it's that's, that's a wrap. So we add Box off the Ballista. And the Box will add Tunneler. And I think the only thing to do now, like, well, I could, like, Trencher summon over the Ballista, link that into a Goliath, and then River Swimmer send it. Uh, but then, well, I still have access to Trencher. Like, I haven't used Trencher yet in Graven. I'm realizing that just now. So we can go ahead and use Trencher to target the Harvester, bring that out. This is going to allow us to get into, it's all, again, it's all a game of getting as many Goliaths in the graveyard as possible. Like, that's, and still being able to make a link, too. Like, you want to be able to link off your last uh, Goliath into a Knuckle, ideally. Because, like, you want to end on Knuckle. It's just a good card. Um, if it's really not doing anything in field, even if it gets cleared, it's like in, it's a card you want in circulation. Um, especially if you are you know, got Skill Drain in deck. Like, that's a card you want in circulation. Because you want to be able to out your own Skill Drain at any point. Uh, especially with its graveyard effect. So we go ahead and use... Uh, Trencher here to bring out Harvester, and I'm thinking right now about whether or not I wanted to uh, pitch box and tunneler to bring out Fortress to then go into an Ender Blath in your play, but I felt like that was maybe uh, a little too greedy and maybe not worth uh, going for. Um, so I was like, you know what, let's just stick to the tried and true, uh, you know. Link into uh, a Harv or a Goliath, Storm or send it off, link that into another Goliath, and then that gets me into the Knuckle. And that's exactly what I want. Just keep it simple and don't uh, overextend and get greedy and play into something. It's the last thing I wanted to do. So now here I go ahead and special summon Fortress by pitching the uh, Trencher or the Tunneler and the Box. I keep confusing the two. And again, here I could have done, like... I could have technically done the Anger Knuckle thing and, uh, you know, pitch the Overdrive in my hand to bring out the uh, Citadel if I really wanted to maximize what I could draw because I'd only be putting back extra deck monsters at that point, so I'd be drawing two into the deck. And then I have the Overdrive Engrave, which allows me to draw a third card. And I was like, let me see Skill Drain, let me see Skill Drain. Uh, but we don't see Skill Drain, we see just Droll and Lock. Which, I mean, Droll plus Citadel um, seems really good. And I play two Fortress, so, like, I can summon out an actual, like, good body off of the Overdrive instead of just, like, a random gear frame. But having gear frame in circulation is not as bad as it sounds, just because you get uh, a perfect Regulus target to, uh, to equip. But, I mean, yeah, that, that that Citadel definitely could have been a bullet. Like, 100% just could have been bullet train. Because summoning uh, Citadel off of Overdrive is better, in my opinion, because you can use Citadel's effect to blow things up, like, immediately. And then, later on, like, if Citadel clears itself and they clear another Earth Machine, you get to bring Citadel back, whereas if you do it the other way around, you have to use Citadel's graveyard effect immediately, and then you have to bring out Citadel and use it again, and then it just kind of sits in grave for the rest of the turn. Um, and you also have to, like, you know, use the trap, and then use Citadel and grave, and all these different things. Like, you're just creating more moving parts, making things a little bit more complicated. So my opponent, um, you know, goes for Per Lily, grabs the, I think, uh, my friend there, and I draw him on resolution, and uh, we're waiting to see if he uses Fenrir here. Which I was like, if he uses Fenrir, like, I'm actually not worried because it'll trigger Fortress. Um, I can chain the Knuckle, and if he gets rid of the Heavy Forward, I don't really care. Which, I mean, he got rid of the Heavy Forward the first game, so I was like, maybe he'll get rid of the Heavy Forward again. I wasn't, I, I wasn't sure why he's so scared of it, but, you know, if he doesn't have that much experience playing against the deck, um, that would make sense. So... He does target Fortress. I chain Fortress. Um, and I get to look at his hand and rip out a card now, which is, like, super good. I was like, all right, now what do I get rid of here? Like, this has got to be, like, one of the best things that could happen. I was like, I got to get rid of something. Um, so I was like, I'll get rid of the Pearly. 
just because now if he wants to use the quick play spell he has to discard my friend and uh but then he could just use my friend to get more well he can't use my friend because he was under drill so i think i made the right call there and at this point this is where i decide i'm gonna fire off the overdrive and again you could just see why sending adding bullet there would have been so much better but again i'm rusty okay and i know that um you know but adding bullet would have been great because there when i go overdrive to target knuckle i can chain knuckle bring out bullet and then summon citadel now citadel can destroy bullet which wipes everything 3k and under and also secures an end phase add back so you know, just kind of show you how that how just changing that one thing makes such a big difference there um, we have overdrive and grave now and we have redeployment in hand which will be live with our draw for turn and that is huge so yeah like overdrive is just simply one of the best uh cards or not overdrive sorry uh, i mean overdrive is great but like redeployment is simply one of the best cards in the deck uh, because that can grab me like a fortress and a rune force and that just sets up so many free bodies um and here i am looking at yeah the i know he has happy memory in hand so i'm just reading it uh really quickly to make sure um i understand exactly what it does and also impromptu ots pack opening am i gonna pull an ulti leave your guesses in the comments what am i gonna get and it's a pull in the rug unfortunately strike out again another week at Lokes with no ulti pulled. It has been actually a long time since I pulled an ulti. I think the last ulti I pulled was a Rhino Heart. So whatever OTS, OTS pack that was in, that's the last ulti that I remember pulling. Um, so my opponent uses Pretty Lily effect to try to rank up, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to send this Citadel here, and uh, I'm going to pop the uh, Fortress, and that's going to blow up everything 2,500 and under. Didn't need to get rid of Citadel there. And uh, obviously the Fenrir is going to stick around because of one of the uh, pretty quick play spells making it so the next time it would be destroyed. It is not. And I believe that's only by card effect. And I also should know the last card in his hand at this point. If he only has one or two cards, then I know I got to look at his hand. Where he had Pearly, he had uh, my friend, and yeah, the, uh, the Happy or the uh, pretty memory sorry so here he uses that pretty pitch uh to summon my friend that's going to summon out a regular pearly a regular regular pearly and uh he has no cards in hand so he cannot rank up and he already used per lily's effect uh so he cannot go that route again and uh, here's i was expecting him just to make like sp just because like he made the anima i was like all right he's gonna banish the uh the citadel yeah so that's exactly what he does and he just passes turn I'm like all right we draw harvester for turn which is great really really good draw not only can that just search me out like tunneler again after i put it back but it's also a great thing to link into goliath which gets you access to river storm that's like this is honestly one of my favorite things about earth machine so i quickly use this overdrive here to draw a card because, um, again, I wanted to put Tunneler uh, back into deck before I normal summon the Harvester. But, like, you're always just one Infinitrack away um, on board from having access to your entire engine. I draw a Droll Knockbird, return Chef's Kiss. But always one Infinitrack away from having access to your entire engine. And I mean that because, like, you know, you put any Infinitrack on field, you link it into Goliath, you go River Stormer effect, send the Goliath... Uh, and then Stormer summons itself in defense, and then Goliath's like, I'm going to attach to this River Stormer, and then you've got material uh, for the free for your River Stormer to go ahead and search you out any Earth Machine from the deck. And at this point, I decide I'm going to go ahead and use Redeployment here uh, by discarding the Harvester to go ahead and add Citadel. And do I go for the other Fortress here? I'm looking for it. Like, where's my other Fortress? But I'm pretty sure he banished it face down. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, we don't have another fortress. So we got to add good old Rune Force. But Rune Force is a custom card by every sense of the imagination. So we're going to go ahead and add those two level 10s. And I uh, obviously didn't want to discard the Droll Knockbird there because that's a huge thing to have going against this deck. So we go ahead and pitch Rune Force, summon out Citadel. And 
Closing out the game here would be really nice, but we're both at 9,000. I still have to worry about an SP Little Knight, which is also a little unfortunate because that card is just really, really good and uh, want to get it off field. I don't want to play into the Little Knight, so I think I decide to end up just going into Battle Phase to get rid of it because I don't want that card just, you know, in circulation, banishing something, bringing stuff back, allowing him to dodge things, etc. Uh, so then we go ahead and summon out Knuckle here. And Knuckle is going to go ahead and send off the Citadel. Send off the Fortress. And then we're going to go River Storm or send off the Knuckle and then Heavy Forward attach. Because I was like, I still needed a way back to River Stormer there. And it can send off any machine link. It doesn't have to be like an Infinite Track. So this is how I'm still going to get access to uh, the Regulus, which is exactly what I want at this point because I need an Omni Negate on field because my opponent is now top decking. So that was the, the importance of that. So we, we take off game two there after a rough game one. Um, you know, finding the line in this deck is always very satisfying, and that was certainly no exception there. Uh, so in game game three, I side in uh, Crows. I have Jizakiru. Um, I'm going to look at my deck list here again. Yes, Crows, Jizakirus, and Drolls. Um, and I end up drawing double Jizakiru DD Crow, which and Urgent Schedule. And, like, this hand honestly could not have been any better sculpted uh for the, the the deck that i'm playing against um, my opponent plays field spell activates happy protecting field spell pitching another field spell summoning out pearly and uh he's like you're gonna have drone lock because i did drone both games one and two um but uh you know i honestly wouldn't even been able to draw in there because he whiffed off the pearly uh, then normal summons per lily and per lily is gonna go ahead and search here i was like if he even grabs um, like the, uh, what is it? The trap. I'm like, I can just kaiju you over the, uh, the pearly Ixies, the noir, if he, uh, even gets that far. Then he grabs my friend. So I was like, all right, fair enough. Then my friend's going to pay five to go ahead and grab, uh, three. And I think he goes for three sleepies here. Yeah. Three sleepies gets the guaranteed. But yeah, like, the, when I opened this hand, I was like, there's no way I just drew this this good of a hand. I was a little shocked. And also, like, it also makes me a little more nervous when I draw, like, hands that I know are cracked. And in my head, I'm like, all right, I drew this hand. There is no way I should lose this. I cannot screw this up, especially on camera, right? I can't, there's no way I can screw this up. Um, so he goes ahead and summons out another pearly. That one does not whiff this time around. And that gets him a uh, free card. Then he goes, Effect of Per Lily, targeting the sleep. I'm like, Chain D Crow, get that out of here. That felt really good. And I'm like, well, he can still technically rank up with a Pearly, which I was like, all right, this is this is not a big deal. Um, so he gets to go into a beauty. And I'm like, I don't care. This is going to get uh, walked over with a Kaiju. And if he does add back, like, I honestly don't care if he gets to add back off my friend, if he gets to summon off the field spell, because he is getting OTK'd with the hand that I have. Harvester plus Heavy Forward plus a free Kaiju level 10 special summon. That also makes the job a little bit easier. Because um, if you know this deck, you know that it can OTK for sure, especially with the cards available in the extra deck. But my opponent, to my surprise, links into SP Little Knight, which I guess is not super surprising. So I have to deal with... Beauty, SP, and also got to worry about uh, whatever card he potentially draws off the uh, pretty, uh, the Sleepy Memory draw. Of course, I would draw in Class Bear there. Uh, star of the Show in Class Bear and Ancient Gearbox just always being in my hand. It's also one of the reasons why I don't really mind playing over 40, which I think I was playing 41 for this tournament. Just because, like, those are really bad cards that you do not want to draw. So I think upping the deck count a little bit over 40, not, like, super crazy, I think is fine. 41 is maybe not enough to notice that difference, so maybe 42 or 43. Maybe just add in two more non-engine cards. Um, but here I go, Jizakiru over top the uh, beauty. And he's going to go ahead and get to trigger all of his effects. You know, my friend's going to add back three. And then the field spell... We'll get to summon from deck. And I was also uh, trying to keep in mind here that uh, 
you know, I still need to make sure that I have less monsters than my opponent does. And, you know, the pearly hits here, too. He gives the, uh, the pearl yeep. So, he just went from having, like, one random card in hand that he drew off the sleepy to now having, like, five cards in hand. So, I was like... And, and it, the thing, too, it's, it's like... It's like, it seems like a lot of cards, but it's really, like, not that big of a deal just because, um... They're, they're all cards that don't do anything uh, in my hand. Um, so, I also had Lightning Storm on the side, too, at this point. But, yeah, my opponent decides to to chain. He's like, you know, do I have to chain? And I was like, yeah, if you want to chain it, go ahead. Um, but he uh, ends up getting rid of the Harvester there, which, again, in the end, didn't really matter because I still had Heavy Forward there. That's why I was okay with the play that I did there. I thought maybe the Harvester would force out the SP Little Knight, and I was correct in thinking that. So yeah, I sided in Lightning Storm, Drolls, DD Crows, and Jizakiras, which is a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, definitely needed to see it because I know I know the Pearly deck likes to play Floodgates like Summon Limit. Um, so that's why I put Lightning Storm in. And maybe Duster was in there too. I didn't see it in the main deck there. So I'm not sure if I put that in. But uh, I know Lightning Storm we just saw. And uh, we're going to bring out the bullet and another copy of harvester here and i was like yeah i know pretty much every card in hand he's like yeah you know these four it's like all right we can work with that and there's pretty much no interruptions left i mean there is still one unknown and this is the card again he drew in the standby phase off sleepy so i was like if that's if that's like a nib or something then it's a nib there's really not much i can do about that um, I make sure to summon Jizakiru first before resolving Dozer. I would just would not get that on the field. And I guess one thing I could have done too to maybe play around Nib as much as possible would have like make a number 81 first with the bullet and the Jizakiru and then resolve Dozer just so I at least have one body through Nib. Um, then we go through River Stormer. River Stormer is going to go ahead and search here. And this is where the deck gets... Oh yeah, the Duster is in the deck. So I had a lot of cards um, in for this matchup. I had DD Crows, three DD Crows, three Droll Knock, which I mean, those are main decks, that's not really sad, but it's just three Droll, two Jizakiru, two Lightning Storm, and Harpy's Feather Duster, all in the main deck there, uh, being sided in. And I think I searched out, what was that, Regulus? Yeah. And, uh, I go Regulus Effect here before I go any further, I'm like, see if this forces anything, it didn't. And then... Now, again, this is where uh, we're just going to continue to play our deck. I feel very safe knowing that I have a Regulus on field, and uh, I know it can stop. If that one last card is had that I don't know, it can stop that. So I'm just going to pretty much play freely at this point. Uh, we're going to link into the Tunneler. Tunneler is going to add Box. Box is going to go ahead and add Tunneler. I say link into the Tunneler. Link into the Ballista. That adds Box. That adds Tunneler. The Ancient Gear Barista. And, yeah, I mean, it's very, very easy uh, to be able to just go for game here. That's exactly what I'm trying to do, just set up game. And uh, I link into another, the third Goliath, like a Riverstorm effect, ascend it. And I have this, like, awkward Goliath sitting here. That was kind of weird. Or, uh, sorry, uh, Riverstormer. But uh, we get to draw two, we draw Droll, and we get to draw Derecrane, which is kind of crazy. The Derecrane, like, honestly, kind of secured that. I'm pretty sure I probably would have had game regardless, but uh, the Derecrane made life a little easier. So I link into Goliath for the fourth time this turn. That allows me to trigger the Derecrane, and that allows me to get that on field to establish this rank 10, which is going to be the... Uh, the gun, which will burn for 2,000, drop him down to 55, and then Derek Crane effect to get to blow something up. I blow up the Jizakiru since that's the biggest threat on the field, biggest body, and then we slap a Juggernaut Leave on top of that, uh, which I don't need to use its effect. I just go Goliath attack over 4,000, 33, and 28 for a game, and that is it. Yeah, and he drew summon limit there on the standby phase. Thankfully, you didn't see that in the opening five, but that is going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Last but not least, a big shout-out goes to our current Divine Level channel members who are H8 Cyber, Mizfit, Cadillacs, Pony Stark, and Green. Thank you guys so much, as always, for extremely kind and very, very generous support of the channel.